Today on Good Morning Maine, three members of a Bangor family will appear in court today accused of murdering a 10-year-old boy. Plus, locals share their thoughts on a proposed consolidation of the Hamden Postal Facility. And the state police have launched a new recruitment video with hopes of filling numerous positions. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have those stories and much more coming up this morning. Uh, but first, let's start off with a little breaking news. We just learned about this. Um, there's a search underway up on Moosehead Lake at this hour for an ice fisherman. He was apparently out on the lake yesterday with some other folks and got cold, decided to head back to camp. Um, on a snowmobile and they haven't heard from him since. So now they're looking throughout the area. Uh, the man's name is Colby Davis and he had been staying at the Tom Hegan Lodge in Rockwood. I just talked with a member of the Rockwood Fire Department. They say wardens have been out all night. They're searching local camps thinking maybe he got lost and had to break into a camp to get warm. Um, so they're asking people to, to check on their camps as well. We really don't know much more than that. We know the warden service and, and others are up there searching for him right now. So hopefully they will find him Soon. It was a very cold night down in the single digits again. So is the concern that he fell through the ice? They don't know. They just don't know what happened. They know he headed back to camp and just didn't show up. Mm. And um, so certainly they've been searching the ice. They followed the track that he might have taken. But I've been up there snowmobiling before. And if you get out on the trails and you're not familiar with them, it's pretty easy to get sidetracked and you could head off in the wilderness somewhere. Yeah, so, it's cold here in yeah. Bangor overnight, but up there it's even yeah. colder. Yeah, so hopefully there's a nice ending to that search. We'll keep you up. Updated. In the meantime, let's check in with Devin for the weather. It is starting off pretty cold today, um, so let's see what he has for us. All righty, thank you very much. We've made it to Friday. We have sunshine that's back in the forecast coming up for today. And then eventually a fast warm up 40s and even some 50s will be on the way very soon. But we do have rain chances on the way that will begin as early as Saturday night. But for now, that will come a couple of advisories to talk about, though. We have a wind chill advisory that drops at 8 a.m. this morning and a gale warning that will also drop a little bit sooner than that along the coast. And it looks like also a freezing spray advisory as well, courtesy of the winds that have been causing some water to splash up along the coast. But for now, though, on land, we're looking pretty good out there. A lot of things are starting to clear, starting to clear out of here now. And otherwise, the rest of today looking pretty good out there, filled with a lot of sunshine. It will be a pretty decent day to go outside as the entire northeast for the time being is looking rather quiet. And we will stay quiet moving forward across the region today. Futurecast moving forward, a lot of sunshine. You might get a few clouds during the afternoon period. Later on tonight, a few passing clouds for again. And otherwise, that looks to be about it. There are some clouds today and clouds again coming up for tonight. The winds can be a little bit gusty from time to time. No, at around 10 to 15 miles per hour sustained. Higher gusts up to 25 miles per hour cannot be ruled out. We'll keep some of those winds going in the parts of your Saturday as well. So for today, we'll say lower 30s, mostly sunny and breezy, with that west wind gusting up to around 20 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, 24 degrees, partly cloudy, with that south breeze backing off to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing temperatures warming up into the 20s and 30s this afternoon, filled with with a lot of sunshine and maybe a few passing clouds. Your full five day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. We'll see you later on. Well, three people accused of murdering a 10 year old boy in Bangor will make their first court appearance today. Authorities say the child was taken to a local hospital with life threatening injuries on February 18th and passed away later that night. The medical examiner's office has ruled the death a homicide. The child's parents, Joshua Smith, Jem Bean, and paternal grandmother, Misty La Tourette, have all been arrested and charged with depraved indifference murder. They are currently being held at the Penobscot County Jail. Residents along B Street, where the family lived, say they're upset by the news. Just not understanding why. It just seems senseless and it's it's heartbreaking. Things like this are not okay. And I mean, if you, you know, if you're gonna have a kid, why would you even have one, you know, if you have tendencies to, you know, be angry or, you know, go off or something like that. That's just, you know, no kid deserves that. The family members are scheduled to be arraigned today in Bangor and we'll have the latest on this evening's newscasts. Authorities have determined that two people found dead in Milford this week was a case of suicide. The bodies were discovered Wednesday afternoon when deputies were asked to check on the people living at a home on Old County Road. They determined the deaths were suspicious and the state police major crimes unit was called in to investigate. The investigation took a turn yesterday when the medical examiner's office determined that both deaths were the result of suicide. 
Meanwhile, fire tore through a camp in Carmel yesterday afternoon. Officials say one person occupied the camp, but it's unclear if they're, they're there year round. They say they believe the fire started on the lake side of the building. And unfortunately, wind was coming off the lake at the time, making for challenging conditions. That was and that was not the only issue. Well, right now we're trying to get this thing to cool down. The, the wind is just going to keep it going. And we're so far down in the woods, literally Channel's getting water in and out. A lot of the equipment's starting to freeze now, too. Now, the exact cause of that fire is not clear. One person was transported for medical treatment, but officials could not confirm who it was or what injuries they had. Chief Azevedo says they plan to stay on the scene for at least a few more hours longer as the wind posed a risk of reignition, and they worried about neighboring properties in the area. 607 Mainers lost their lives to preventable overdose deaths last year, a decrease from 723 deaths in 2022. One group is hoping to reduce that number even further by providing training to the public on how to administer the overdose reversal drug naloxone, also known by its brand name Narcan. Mobilized Recovery partnered with the Augusta Food Bank to provide the Narcan training and provided participants with two doses. The Augusta Food Bank provides food to around 350 households monthly during their Thursday distribution day. Jonathan Reynolds, a community organizer with Mobilized Recovery, explains why it's important for everyone to be trained on how to administer Narcan, even if you or a loved one don't struggle with substance use disorder. It's important to have it so you can save someone's life in case you're ever driving down the street and you witness an overdose or you're ever around somewhere and somebody overdoses. It's always good to have so you can be there to save someone's life. Most people, the way I explain it is if they're familiar with Flonase, the allergy medication, it looks just like Flonase. And it's also administered the same way Flonase is uh, administered to yourself through allergies. Um, the best way to, to uh, train somebody is just explain to them that to stay calm. Reynolds adds you should always call 911 after administering Narcan and stressed that Maine has the strongest Good Samaritan law in the nation. So you can't be arrested for most drug related crimes if you call 911 because of an overdose. For more information or to learn how to get Narcan training, you can find the Maine Recovery Advocacy Project on Facebook. Well, starting in early January, the United States Postal Service began their facility review of the Eastern Main Processing and Distribution Center. In their review, they found consolidating the Hamden facility would improve both their efficiency and their carbon footprint. Part of their review is to hold a public meeting to discuss their initial findings. Our Doug Banks attended last night's meeting and brings us those details. On Thursday, people gathered to hear from USPS about the Eastern Main Processing and Distribution Center facility review. Even if they don't reassign people, it's still going to impact the service that's provided to people in Maine. The proposal would have outgoing mail to any destination in or out of the state be sent to Scarborough first, even if its destination is in this region. Mail coming into the region would still go through the Hamden facility. With the room you're freeing up in all of these local facilities, you, you can retool them to better handle the mail that's coming into their area for local delivery. It's a day down there, another day back up, two, three day delay, which uh, could be catastrophic. Among those who stepped to the podium, a Brewer City Council member asked for a resolve to be read in their next city council meeting over the logistical problems that could arise. The idea of it being um, less expensive to transport all of our mail um, to southern Maine uh, just does not make any sense to us. Secretary of State Shanna Bellows spoke to the potential difficulties of sending absentee ballots. Sending Northern Maine mail down to Southern Maine and then bringing it back up doesn't make a lot of sense and furthermore endangers timely ballot delivery. Senate Chair Troy Jackson brought to the podium a joint resolution signed by the entire Maine House and Senate showing their disapproval of consolidation. We represent 1.3 million people across the state, which is the entire state, so whenever the Maine legislature speaks unanimously on something like that, I mean, in effect, we're unanimously speaking for all 1.3 million people. In Maine, the right to vote and participate in elections is a key tenant of protecting the democratic process. That right is extended to everyone, regardless of race, religion, or disability. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bichard spoke with Maine's top election official about accessibility in Maine's voting process.
So here in Maine, we do our best to make voting not only safe and secure, but also accessible to everyone. Secretary of State Shanna Bellows is in charge of elections in Maine. While the system isn't new, Secretary Bellows sometimes hears from people who didn't know the technology existed until Election Day. In Maine, we use what's called the Express Vote. It's a machine that helps people vote if they have uh, a disability that precludes them from filling out the paper ballot. Secretary Bellows adds the accessible voting machines are never connected to the Internet. And while they're designed to help people with disabilities, the technology is available for everyone. Anyone can use the accessible voting machine. So perhaps uh, a viewer at home doesn't have a disability, but they have arthritis in their hands, or they just don't like filling things out and they want to use a touch screen. The accessible voting system is for everyone. Anyone can use it. It does produce a paper ballot because paper ballots are the gold standard in election security. We asked Secretary Bellows to walk us through the process of using the express vote machine. So first, there is a blank ballot that you insert into the activator. Today, we're obviously not actually voting. <laughs> so, do you like Bugs Bunny, Daisy Duck, or Scooby-Doo? I'm a big fan of Scooby-Doo. You touch your selection, and then you go to the next button. Ah, there's a citizen initiative in this one. Do you favor allowing talking animals in Maine to wear top hats and bow ties in public? Yes. So, now I can review my selections. I can verify what I did. I voted for Scooby-Doo for President of the United States, and I voted yes on the referendum question regarding whether animals could wear top hats. Now I print that card. Now that is the card that I placed in the machine. So you then remove it. You can see it voted President of the United States and the Citizen Initiative. The presidential primary election in Maine is next Tuesday, March 5th. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. I'm ready for Scooby-Doo to be president, too. Yeah, right. you know, hey, why not? I you love Scooby-Doo. All right, moving on now. Presidential hopeful Nikki Haley will be campaigning in Maine this weekend. The Republican candidate rallied in Virginia yesterday, one of 15 states taking part in Super Tuesday, including the state of Maine. This weekend, Haley is heading to the Elks Lodge down in Portland for a rally Sunday at 7 p.m. Her rival, former President Trump, spent Thursday on the southern border, as did President Biden. We'll have more on that coming up. More than 500 organizations, businesses, and towns from across the state yesterday urged lawmakers to pass a 30 million Maine Trails bond. If passed, voters could have an opportunity to improve it during the November election. The bill would provide $30 million in grants over four years to organizations and towns for motorized, non-motorized, and multi-use trail projects. Funds would be managed by the Bureau of Parks and Lands. This would be the first ever opportunity for Maine voters to vote on a trails bond. Supporters say the rain and wind storms caused flooding and serious trail damage, increasing the sense of urgency for funding to help communities, trail clubs, and land trusts with the needed repair work. If this is approved by voters, the $30 million bond would address urgent needs for our trail system. Maine needs and outgoing sources of funding to support clubs and trails. Those longer term funding discussions are underway and this bond proposal would provide a bridge to get rid of this, to get us out of this solution. We urge the legislative to put the bond proposal out to voters in November and let them make a decision, which is a good decision, a great investment, and which we believe they will support. The Appropriations Committee is expected to decide the fate of the main trails bond in the weeks ahead. The bill would then need a two-thirds vote in the House and Senate and the governor's signature to place it on the November 2024 ballot for consideration by Maine voters. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Hey, some big news out of Bar Harbor as well. A federal judge yesterday ruled that the city can or the town can in fact limit the number of cruise ship passengers coming to town. As you recall, um, some people in town don't like the when they're just inundated with people. It just gets too congested down there. Other business uh, owners, they love it. They love the extra business. And um, But there was a lawsuit, and a federal judge has sided with the folks who want to limit the number of 
cruise ships there. That's according to the Bangor Daily News. You can read all about it in this morning's paper. That's big news for Bar Harbor. Huge news. Yeah, yeah. and the island in general. Yeah. All right, the time now 6.15. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the Winter Special Olympics have wrapped up for the season. We'll check out how a new recruitment video from the state police as it works to fill the ranks. Is that two different teases? Two different teases. Okay, that's... That's, that's why he says, and we'll also check out a new recruitment uh, video. Yeah, okay. I should have told you about that. Yeah. Anyway, first another <laughs> check of that forecast. Today will be mostly sunny and breezy, with highs up near 30 degrees. Tonight, partly cloudy, with lows dropping down to around 24. Tomorrow, increasing clouds and a little rain later on in the day. The highs up near 45 degrees. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Does your dream kitchen look like this? Or this? Or maybe you need a little more inspiration. Get it when you explore the complete in-store showroom displays at Hammond Lumber Company. When you find the look you like, the Hammond team will help you customize it, including accurate 3D renderings so you can visualize your project before the work begins. Hammond offers delivery from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire and professional service after the sale. Your dream kitchen begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. All the nonsense. Fibba, fibba. Meets no nonsense. I don't buy it. Judge Judy. Weekdays at 5 on ABC7. Well, of course you're doing well. You're here on Wheel of Fortune. Let's go win some money. These contestants are going places. Scandinavia. Ah! They're moving and shaking. Yes! And getting it done here on Wheel. We could try to make it look a little harder. <laughs> Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. The Department of Public Safety unveiled a new recruitment video yesterday. It's one of many efforts to address critical staffing issues at Maine's law enforcement agencies. Our Grace Blanchard has more. As law enforcement agencies across the state continue to face staffing shortages, the Department of Public Safety has launched a new video that they hope will be a game changer specifically for out-of-state recruiting. What's so unique about this particular program is it's really about Maine in general. The Commissioner of Public Safety says their mission is to reach a nationwide audience by marketing Maine as not just a great place to work, but also to live. Maine, uh, while it's a beautiful place to live, love, and raise families, we are not immune uh, to the staffing issues that you see all over the country. There are currently over 300 vacancies at police departments, dispatch centers, and correctional facilities across the state. And advocates say the staffing shortages are not only affecting law enforcement. It's affecting all areas of public safety. We are all struggling to recruit, train, and keep folks in this profession. The Maine Chiefs of Police Association partnered with students from Husson University to develop this innovative project. These amazing students were excited to capture the imagery of community service and progressive law enforcement services while showcasing Maine. I'm confident that once we get our hands on folks, when they come up to the state and they start looking around, they start talking to our professionals, that we're going to keep them. In Augusta, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In other news, an abandoned gravel pit in Hamden has been transformed into a community solar farm. Revision Energy held a groundbreaking yesterday to mark the opening of that facility called Wish Camper Hamden. The solar farm has more than 14,000 panels. This is good news for us Mainers because every year our state exports $4 billion from the local economy to import finite polluting fossil fuels from away. Every time we build a clean energy project like this behind me, we keep our energy dollars right here at home in the local economy. There are several institutions benefiting from the energy the facility creates, including the Deer Isle Stonington School District, Mount Desert Island Hospital in Bar Harbor, the Bangor Water District, and the town of Blue Hill as well. Speed skating, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, and more. 
The Special Olympics Maine Winter Games are in the books. Photojournalist Colin Marr takes us there. They put a lot of training into these competitions that we host. We have an eight-week training regiment that our coaches put them through leading into the competition. And, you know, they battle every element, especially with winter games. What made me want to compete here is just the camaraderie and all my friends and, and, being, and being able to uh, see if I can try to win a couple medals. That's my guy. A lot of our athletes, you know, really look forward to these days that we put on for Special Olympics. Whether it's, uh, you know, during the week or whatever, leading into a month out, um, it's their crown jewel of, you know, their athletic ability. I actually like doing Special Olympics. It's fun and exciting. It's a very special day. It's a little freezy outside, but it's good to get out. That's all, folks. They have such a blast doing it. It's not so much about the competition. It's about getting outside, yeah. being with their friends and family, and you just look at the smiles. That's what they it's all so about. They look so happy, all bundled up. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, pretty neat. Oh, yeah. and by the way, I believe his name is Colin Marr, not Colin Marr. That sounds about Sorry right. Sorry about that. <laughs> so Hope nobody calls you Colin, other than me. Okay. The Big mistake. <laughs> the time now is 621. After the break, yesterday was a leap day. We'll hear from an astronomer from the University of Maine on what that means. Plus, that forecast coming up right after the break. In 10 years, Lisa Schneider will have an amazing second act. Thanks to career reskilling courses from AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Try dietary supplements from Volterran for healthy joints. My father started a roofing company in the 1970s. Back when asbestos was still commonly used in Maine. When George was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew there wasn't a cure yet, but we knew he needed help. We call it Jeb Bornstein's office because this family means business. Their team is handling everything, representing Mainers who were victims of asbestos exposure. We highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. We get up and go no matter what day it is. We make sure nothing keeps us from doing what needs to be done because we're driven by what we love. Milwaukee's outdoor power equipment handles any job, big or small. From trimmers, blowers, and mowers to chain and pole saws, Milwaukee's battery-operated high-output tools will help get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. Yesterday was February 29th. It's a day that doesn't appear on your calendar very often. And while an extra day every once for every four years might seem insignificant, experts say it's not. Our David Ledford has more. Leap day. It's a footnote on many desk calendars. An extra day in February that comes with each leap year. But why? We sat down with University of Maine astronomy expert Sean Lotch to find out. Leap year is to balance out our calendars. The Earth takes 365 and a quarter days to orbit the Sun. Every four years, we add that extra quarter day. Lotch says this is because a large portion of the world uses the Gregorian calendar, a solar dating system. Our, our sense of time is measured by things in the sky. People today, I don't think, often think of that. They think of their clock. But, you know, we started off by, you know, measuring things in the sky, the rotation of the Earth on its axis. <laughs> our revolution around the sun. Watch says if we didn't have leap years, our calendar system wouldn't make sense anymore. Seasons would begin to drift and things like holidays wouldn't fall where we expect them to. The New Year's Day or for instance uh, Christmas or Easter or other things like that, they will start to shift and pretty soon they would be several months off. 
it would get warmer and warmer and you'd it ended up being like springtime when you actually had Christmas. February 29th comes once every four years, with an exception that involves a bit of math. Leap years divisible by 100 but not 400 are skipped. That means the last skipped leap year was in 1900, and we won't skip another one until 2100. In Orono, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, the time now is 625. Let's, Speaking of time. Yeah, right. Let's get a full <laughs> look at our weather forecast. All righty, we've made it to Friday, and it's going to be filled with a lot of sunshine today. You might notice some clouds from time to time in a few spots. We have a fast warm-up on the way coming up, where 40s and 50s do look to make a return coming up in the next few days, with rain chances on the way coming up as we head towards Saturday night. But for now, though, a couple of advisories we've had our eye on. No wind chill advisory in the northern parts of the state that will drop at around 8 a.m. this morning. Gale warnings drop a little bit sooner than that, though, along the coast. Some other advisories continue to remain posted because of the wind along the coast but otherwise the wave heights are a little bit active ranging from around two to five feet according to these buoys here farther out towards sea even up to 13 feet and where you see this color right about in here indicating some higher surf that has been observed from time to time already your radar and satellite looking pretty quiet after this morning we're going to keep that going for most of the daytime period today which will be filled with a lot of sunshine so it's going to be a nice day to go outside and do some activities temperatures making into the 30s today as well so overall not too bad the bigger picture looks like this with the cold front passing through high pressure not too far away and high pressure is our friend when it comes to calmer weather and we will have calm weather coming up for today set aside maybe some gusty winds from time to time otherwise future cast moving forward though looking like a pretty good day out there lots of sunshine maybe some passing clouds from time to time we'll be under a partly cloudy sky in a few spots coming up later on tonight as we head towards tomorrow not too bad either filled with a lot of sunshine clouds approach for the afternoon period with late afternoon showers rain showers that is that will be possible and those will continue Saturday night and the parts of your Sunday as well. Otherwise, though, when you talk about the rainfall, I'm going to run it through Tuesday because there are some chances for rain coming up and some spots between now and Tuesday you can see up to a half an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch before we're all finished up. And of course, expect these numbers to adjust just a little bit as we get a little bit closer to the rainfall. Average high temperature 35 degrees. We'll do lower 30s today, mid 40s Saturday, lower 50s Sunday into Monday, uh, upper 40s as we head towards a Tuesday, lower 50s Wednesday, and we're back in the 40s as we head towards your Thursday. For today, lower 30s, mostly sunny and breezy, with that west wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, mid 20s, partly cloudy, and that south breeze backing off to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, here we go, mid 40s, increasing clouds, afternoon rain showers possible, and that south wind gusting up again to around 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at extended forecast. More rain showers are possible on Sunday with highs in the low 50s, mostly cloudy Monday with highs in the low 50s, and upper 40s Tuesday with a chance for rain showers again. I got hurt in a car accident. Give me one good reason why I should call the twos. How about three great reasons you should call us? One, we make it easy. We'll deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. Two, there's no upfront cost. Read the result. Just listen to this. I called the twos after my accident and Lowry and Associates got me $300,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call two, 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 22, 22. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovations supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home, or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Whether you can pinpoint the problem or can't quite put your finger on it, the friendly professionals from Coastal Auto Parts can help point you in the right direction. With Maine's largest network of parts, you can trust your vehicle will have what it needs to get you to the moments that matter most. Because Napa knows the keys to a winning team. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts helps keep our communities running. Team up together with the fuel that keeps us firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. With remote access from Katahdin Federal Credit Union, you can manage your money from anywhere. 
Don't let banking get in the way of living. Remote access from Katahdin Federal Credit Union. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. how big an election issue immigration has become, President Biden and former President Donald Trump both visited the southern border on Thursday. They traded blame over who's to blame for an influx of migrants coming into the U.S. President Biden urging congressional Republicans to pass more border security during a visit to Brownsville, Texas on Thursday. Just five hours away, Donald Trump pointed the finger at Biden saying it's his open border policies that have led to a record number of migrant crossings in the U.S. Trump toured the city of Eagle Pass, the center of an ongoing court battle between Governor Greg Abbott and the Biden administration over border security issues, including the placement of razor wire in the Rio Grande. The trips come as a growing number of Americans name immigration as the worst or most important issue facing the country. That's according to a recent Gallup poll. As the immigration debate continues, a federal judge on Thursday blocked Texas from enforcing a new law that makes illegal immigration a state crime. Meanwhile, Israeli soldiers opened fire on civilians waiting for food in Gaza City. They say it was self-defense. The Palestinians say it was a war crime. Witnesses say Israeli forces fired on a crowd of people waiting in line for food in Gaza City. More than 100 were killed and at least 700 were injured. The White House says it's still investigating, but the incident underscores the urgency of the ceasefire talks that are currently underway. President Biden had previously said he was hoping for a new agreement by Monday, but acknowledges that's not likely after Thursday's attack. Making things worse, there are virtually no medical supplies to treat the hundreds of wounded civilians, resulting in chaotic scenes inside the few remaining hospitals that are still functioning in northern Gaza. Russian President Vladimir Putin is once again warning the West to stay out of his country's business, or else. Putin told Parliament on Thursday that the West is trying to destroy Russia. Russia's presidential election is in mid-March, with early voting already underway in remote regions. For the first time, voting will take place in occupied Ukrainian territories, something the U.S. quickly condemned. Washington is also watching the situation in Moldova after pro-Russian officials in the breakaway region of Transnistria asked, Mos asked Moscow for protection. Putin amended Russia's constitution, enabling him to remain in power until 2036. He's widely expected to win a fifth term this month, with most of his prominent opponents exiled behind bars or dead. Yulia Navalny keeps Alexei Navalny's message alive. Her husband, the famous opposition leader who recently died in a Russian jail, had urged his supporters to voice their disapproval at the polls this year. Police are already outside the cemetery where the 47-year-old will be buried today. Well, February 2024 is on track to become the hottest February on record around the globe. The first month of 2024 was the hottest January on record, and it appears February could follow it into the record books. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, says February will likely have the highest global average temperature ever recorded for that month. Scientists attribute that to fossil fuel-driven fuel climate change and the warming in the eastern Pacific Ocean, known as El Nino. NOAA predicts there's a 22% chance that 2024 will break 2023's record as the hottest year ever. Not a big surprise for the folks up here in Maine. We haven't had much snow. The ice conditions have been awful. Just, you know, things are warming up. Well, looking at world news, there's floods everywhere yeah. and there's fires everywhere. Yeah, so. yeah, we had plenty of flooding and storms here in Maine, too. Yep, yeah. right. Mm. All right, coming up on the second half of the newscast, there was a lot of hiring going on in Bangor yesterday. We'll get a glimpse of the preparations at Bangor's new Rennie's location. Plus, we'll have the latest installment of Destination Devon, heading to Skowhegan to check out some skijoring. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. You're stepping inside from a romp in the snow with the kids. Time to take the chill off with a cup of hot chocolate and a push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump from Valley Home Services. Skip the worry of heating bills and call or visit valleymain.com today to start saving. RK Variety is more than just a convenience store. With delicious homemade food made fresh daily, 
We offer hearty meals that don't break the bank. Whether it be our delicious chicken pot pie, one of our many savory soups, or a pizza, you can't go wrong at RK Variety. Looking for a drink after a long work day? RK Variety is an agency liquor store with an impressive selection. RK Variety, more than just a convenience store. We're your neighbor, chef, barista, and friend. Stop by today. Empire Today here to show you the easiest way to get new floors. Shop at home. Empire brings samples to you. Hundreds of options. Carpet, hardwood, tile, vinyl, and laminate. We'll help you pick the right floor and measure your rooms for free. You'll get a price estimate for your entire job, and you can even finance it right on the spot. It's that easy. Shop for floors at home. That's Empire Today. 800-588-2300. Empire Today. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all, that's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know, every morning, we're right here, and we got you. Congratulations, Dexter Tigers, on a great season from all of your friends at Rowell's Garage, Dover Foxcroft. And McCusa Petroleum wishes good luck to the Dexter girls basketball team in the state tournament. The new efficiency main heat pump rebates are here, and they're huge based on income saved from four dollars to $11,100. And when combined with the new tax credits, the savings are bigger than ever, and Valley gives you your rebate instantly. Call Valley Home Services now for your new Fujitsu heat pump. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Yeah, I guess so. Get you waking up a little bit. <laughs> yes. All right, welcome back, everyone. Today is Friday, March 1st, 2024. It's also National Day of Unplugging. Do you ever find yourself endlessly scrolling on your cell phone? Many of us increasingly miss out on the valuable moments of our lives as we pass the hours with our faces buried in our phones. This day was created to encourage people to detox digitally, to spend more time with their friends and family. The Global Day of Unplugging runs until sundown to give people time to relax, be active, visit the outdoors, and connect with loved ones. It's a good idea. Uh, how many times you look around, everybody has their heads buried in their phone. I know. I'm guilty of it sometimes, Me too. Me too. All right, on this day in history, way back in 1780, Pennsylvania became the first state to abolish slavery. In 1781, the American colonies adopted the Articles of Confederation, paving the way for a new federal union. In 1872, Yellowstone National Park was established by an act of Congress. It was the first area in the world to be designated as a national park. In 1953, former Soviet General Secretary Joseph Stalin had a major stroke. He died four days later. In 1954, four Puerto Rican nationalists opened fire from the Spectator's Gallery in the U.S. House of Representatives, wounding five members of Congress. I never knew about that. I didn't either. Yeah. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy founded the Peace Corps. In 1974, seven people, including several staffers from the Nixon White House, were all indicted as part of the Watergate break-in. In 1995, the company, formerly known as Jerry and David's Guide to the World Wide Web, incorporated under the name Yahoo. I love that one. Yeah. Jerry and yeah. David's. David, Jerry and David, they just came up with a, you know, <laughs> well, we ought to call it something else, I guess. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yahoo. Yeah. In 2005, Dennis Rader, the church-going family man accused of leading a double life as the BTK serial killer, was charged with 10 counts of murder. And in 2016, astronaut Scott Kelly completed the longest single space mission by spending 340 days aboard the International Space Station. That's a long time. No, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Today's birthdays include pop star Justin Bieber, who is 30 years old today. That's Whoa. an old picture of him. <laughs> Singer Roger Daltrey from The Who is 80 years old. And actor and director Ron Howard is 70 years old today. Happy birthday to all of them. It's also Kesha's birthday, too. I Happy just, birthday, I Kesha. Couldn't fit them all in yeah, there. But yeah, yeah. I like Kesha. Yeah. So, all sorts hey, of folks. As far as the weather's concerned, it looks like a nice day today, starting off on the cold side, but things will be warming up as we head through the weekend. Yes, sir. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. 
All righty, thank you very much. We've made it to Friday. We have sunshine that's back in the forecast coming up for today. And then eventually a fast warm up 40s and even some 50s will be on the way very soon. But we do have rain chances on the way that will begin as early as Saturday night. But for now, that will come a couple of advisories to talk about, though. We have a wind chill advisory that drops at 8 a.m. this morning and a gale warning that will also drop a little bit sooner than that along the coast. And it looks like also a freezing spray advisory as well, courtesy of the winds that have been causing some water to splash up along the coast. But for now, though, on land, we're looking pretty good out there. A lot of things are starting to clear, starting to clear out of here now. And otherwise, the rest of today looking pretty good out there, filled with a lot of sunshine. It will be a pretty decent day to go outside as the entire northeast for the time being is looking rather quiet. And we will stay quiet moving forward across the region today. Futurecast moving forward, a lot of sunshine. You might get a few clouds during the afternoon period. Later on tonight, a few passing clouds for again. And otherwise, that looks to be about it. There are some clouds today and clouds again coming up for tonight. The winds can be a little bit gusty from time to time. No, at around 10 and 15 miles per hour sustained. Higher gusts up to 25 miles per hour cannot be ruled out. We'll keep some of those winds going in the parts of your Saturday as well. So for today, we'll say lower 30s, mostly sunny and breezy with that west wind gusting up to around 20 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, 24 degrees, partly cloudy with that south breeze backing off to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing temperatures warming up into the 20s and 30s this afternoon filled with a lot of sunshine and maybe a few passing clouds. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. Well, as we've been telling you, a main adventure is coming to the Queen City. Rennies is opening a new location in Bangor, and they're looking for adventurers to join the team. Yesterday, the company hosted a hiring event at its new location on Springer Drive by the Bangor Mall. That's the site of the former Christmas tree shop. Members of the Rennie family had the opportunity to conduct on-site interviews with potential employees during that event. They're looking to hire around 50 people to help run that Bangor store over the months ahead. Rennie's, by the way, the new location is scheduled to open to the public on April 4th. If you missed it yesterday, probably still a chance to file an application and Seems get yourself like a job. Seems yeah. like it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, right after the break, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with sports. Don't go away. The hot, crispy filet of fish with soft steamed buns, tender, flaky fish, melty cheese, and tangy tartar sauce. You either love it or you haven't tried it yet. Now at McDonald's, order a crispy, delicious filet of fish, a tender, juicy McCrispy or spicy McCrispy, two for only six dollars. The insurance company wants nothing more than to deny your claim. Deny. Meet John. Delay. The adjuster. He sticks deny. to the three Ds. Delay. Deny. No. Devalue. And if he does have to pay, it's often with a very tiny check. At first I was going to delay, and then I thought, no. Denied. They called the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maybe we should settle this one. If you've been injured in an accident, call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. The Orono Arcade is an ideal birthday party destination. We have the best arcade video games, including Tomb Raider, Halo, Need for Speed, Mario Kart, and Luigi's Mansion. You are guaranteed to have hours of fun. Plus, we also have a nine-hole black light mini golf course that changes weekly. Allow us to provide hours of fun for you and your friends. You bring the cake, we'll provide the entertainment. Call us today to schedule your birthday party event, 889-3166. Local News Weeknights at 6 with Beth Jones and Peter Dubois on ABC7. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Of course, we are going to start with some hoops. It's just under 24 hours away from the high school gold ball games getting underway. Now we'll head down to Thorndike to check out the Class C North boys champs from Mount View. The seventh seeded Mustangs winning their first regional title since 1987 on Saturday over top seed Callis after knocking off the two and three seeds in the quarterfinals and semis. Even with their seeding at seven, they played nothing but Class B schools in the regular season aside from just three games. So for the Mustangs, this provided them a distinct advantage over their fellow Class C schools.
We saw some of the top talents in the state play this year, and it definitely helps us, and it makes us stronger as a team. When you're playing Madomic, Lincoln Academy, Oceanside, it only makes you stronger, makes you faster. Um, and as I've been continuously saying, it certainly has battle-tested us um, and prepared us for the tournament. Saturday in Augusta, Mount View faces Monmouth for the state game, a team that they say will be the best they've seen in the tournament, but not all year. So if the Mustangs stick to their fast, in-your-face style of play, they believe they'll bring home that gold ball, a crowning moment for a squad that has really grown up with each other and a community that loves them so much. Uh, I think it would mean everything to me and our community. It's been 37 years and we were able to do it. Just, it's been amazing. It's the ultimate goal and it's the ultimate prize that we've been focused on from day one um, of last year. And um, we're hoping that's the result. It'd mean everything to people that I grew up with playing and to win it with them, it'd, it'd just be amazing. All right, let's head over to the ice now on Friday. Maine Hockey will head to Vermont to play their second to last series of the year and their first meeting this season with the Catamounts. It's been a less than ideal last few weeks for the Black Bears being swept at New Hampshire before splitting a home series with a red hot Northeastern team. Vermont right now sits tied for eighth place. They're just one spot out from hosting a home play in game. So Maine knows they'll have to play a very detailed 60 minutes both nights. If they want to build some momentum heading into the final weekend and the playoffs. We've had some sprouts in the past couple weeks where we've been struggling a little bit. And to be honest, it's better to go through that now than in playoffs, like we've kind of emphasized. Uh, if we can kind of get in the flow of things and play our game the right way these next four, uh, just get some momentum going to the playoffs and be huge. You know, it hasn't been terrible in every aspect, but it hasn't been good enough. And we're playing good teams every night. Our league is so good that if you're off in one aspect of the game, you're going to lose. We didn't get taught that lesson necessarily the first half of the season, and um, now we're learning that lesson. And we have to learn how to, um, how to be good and detailed in everything we do. All right, let's stay on the ice now. After quarterfinals on Tuesday for Class B North boys hockey, the high school hockey ranks, those semifinal matchups are now set, but there has been a location change. Change Rather than both semifinal games being played in Presque Isle, those games will now be at Jack Kelly Rink at Colby College in Waterville. We'll start at 5.30 p.m. with Camden Hills taking on Old Town Orno. And then right after that at 7.30, it's Coney, Monmouth, Erskine, Mount Blue, Richmond playing Hamden Academy. All right, let's go back to the basketball court now. Maine men's and women's basketball, both with just a few games left in the regular season. Both in action Thursday against Binghamton. I'm going to start with the woman here. Th third quarter, Binghamton's Deny Bowman rips the rock from Olivia Rockwood, tosses it down to Megan Casey, who lays it in to cut the lead to two. Next possession, Maine's Ann Simon, the inbound to Caroline Borneman, gives it right back to Ann. She nails the three from the corner. Fourth quarter, Binghamton's Bella Pucci kicks it to Ella Wanzer on the left wing. She connects with her three-pointer, but the Black Bears were just too much. Here is Adriana Smith with the overhead pass to Rockwood on the ring, three on the wing, three of her own. Count it. Maine goes on to win 57-51. You know, it wasn't the prettiest game probably to watch, but um, really proud of our team and how they fought. I thought defensively for the first three quarters, we were really, really good. Um, just really happy and proud of our team. Right, let's go to the men now. They are on the road in New York looking for their third win in a row. But they've got to get past the Bearcats here. We're going to pick this up in the second half. Bearcats lead by five. Black Bears want it back. Deshante Wright McLeish brings Maine all the way back, hits a tray, and he's headed to the line for one more. The run would continue. Peter Filipovich, a give and go from Jaden Clayton. Bears climb back in this and now lead by four. Here's BU's Armin Harid looks to end the drought himself, fakes, turns, uses the bank for a mid-range two. Nice post move right there. Overtime now, Talon Tynes with it, runs a nice pick and pop with Christian's Fearbergs. You can count the three. Black Bears would hit two straight and lead by two. Tie game now, Taimu Shinery misses the mid-range, but Nahimiye Benson gets the board and connects to take the lead. Maine falls to Binghamton in overtime, 76-74. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back. Goose River Farm and Meat Store is conveniently located on Route 3 across from Hammond Lumber in Belfast. They have a wide selection of meat and poultry, including beef, pork, lamb, chicken, duck, rabbit, and turkey. Open Tuesday through Saturday. 
In 10 years, Lisa Schneider will have an amazing second act. Thanks to career reskilling courses from AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Your local professional eco-friendly office space partner is Levec Business Solutions, your one-stop shop to get the job done. Handling all your office furniture and printing machine needs at an affordable price. Offering full system integration into your workplace and local service on everything we sell. We can even remote monitor your system with just-in-time inventory and service need assessments. Little to no downtime gives you peace of mind. At Levec Business Solutions, your solution is only an email or a phone call away. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving, located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Welcome back. Over the past six years, a new sport has emerged in Maine that you just have to see to believe. I'll tell you all about it in this week's Destination Devon. I have a need for speed. I love horses, but I'm not one to ride it. So behind it on skis is perfect for me. Skijoring is a sport still relatively new to Maine where skiers and snowboarders race around a track as fast as they can strapped to the back of a horse. Maine is currently home to three skijoring races, one in Thompson, one in Bangor, and another in Skowhegan. We were uh, the first, uh, so we're proud of that. That's Christina Cannon. She's the president of Main Street Skowhegan, the group that brought the first skijoring competition to Maine six years ago. There's a few variations to skijoring, but for the competition in Skowhegan, teams of skiers and riders go around the track as fast as they can while trying to navigate gates, go over jumps, and grab rings. So you have to have a clean run and the fastest time, essentially, to be able to win. The rules are simple enough, and the competitors tend to not overcomplicate things when it comes to their strategies. To hopefully stay on and go fast. <laughs> <laughs> you... And keep my skier upright. It's just like any sport. You know, you're just getting in the moment and you're enjoying it and you're taking the speed and you're focused on making your gates and just focused on her, making sure everything's going right. Cannon says although the Skajor competition is only part of the week-long Somerset Snowfest, it attracts people from all over the country. Uh, we've probably had a couple thousand people out um, here enjoying the, the race. In my opinion, there was a certain dark horse, or dare I say, dark donkey, that stole the show. How'd you get him on skis? <laughs> I asked nicely. Sylvester is a specially trained mini donkey, and according to his friend Rebecca Platts, he is quite possibly the only known ski drawing mini donkey in existence. I have looked online extensively. I have Googled lots and lots, and I have not found another ski drawing donkey. So if anybody has a ski drawing donkey, please get in touch with me because I want to talk to you and meet you. All right, now here's meteorologist Devin Biggs with our full weather forecast. All righty, we've made it to Friday and it's going to be filled with a lot of sunshine today. You might notice some clouds from time to time in a few spots. We have a fast warm up on the way coming up where 40s and 50s do look to make a return coming up in the next few days with rain chances on the way coming up as we head towards Saturday night. But for now, though, a couple of advisories we've had our eye on no wind chill advisory in the northern parts of the state that will drop at around 8 a.m. this morning. Gale warnings drop a little bit sooner than that, though, along the coast. Some other advisories continue to remain posted because of the wind along the coast. But otherwise, the wave heights are a little bit active, ranging from around 2 to 5 feet, according to these buoys here, farther out towards sea, even up to 13 feet. And where you see this color right about in here, indicating some higher surf that has been observed from time to time. Already, your radar and satellite looking pretty quiet after this morning. We're going to keep that going for most of the daytime period today, which will be filled with a lot of sunshine. So it's going to be a nice day to go outside and do some activities. Temperatures making into the 30s today as well. So overall, not too bad. The bigger picture looks 
looks like this with the cold front passing through high pressure not too far away and high pressure is our friend when it comes to calmer weather and we will have calm weather coming up for today set aside maybe some gusty winds from time to time otherwise future cast moving forward though looking like a pretty good day out there lots of sunshine maybe some passing clouds from time to time we'll be under a partly cloudy sky in a few spots coming up later on tonight as we head towards tomorrow not too bad either filled with a lot of sunshine clouds approach for the afternoon period with late afternoon showers rain showers that is that will be possible and those will continue saturday night and the parts of your sunday as well otherwise though when you talk about the rainfall i'm going to run it through tuesday because there are some chances for rain coming up and some spots between now and tuesday you can see up to a half an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch before we're all finished up and of course expect these numbers to adjust just a little bit as we get a little bit closer to the rainfall average high temperature 35 degrees we'll do lower 30s today mid 40s saturday lower 50s sunday into monday uh, upper 40s as we head towards a tuesday lower 50s wednesday and we're back in the 40s as we head towards a thursday for today lower 30s mostly sunny and breezy with that west wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour later on tonight mid 20s partly cloudy and that south breeze backing off to about five to 10 miles per hour tomorrow here we go mid 40s increasing clouds afternoon rain showers possible and that south wind gusting up again to around 25 miles per hour all righty here's a look at extended forecast more rain showers are possible on sunday with highs in the low 50s mostly cloudy monday with highs in the low 50s and upper 40s tuesday with a chance for rain showers again oh what a good time we will have you can make it happen Try dietary supplements from Volterran for healthy joints. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Whether you can pinpoint the problem or can't quite put your finger on it, the friendly professionals from Coastal Auto Parts can help point you in the right direction. With Maine's largest network of parts, you can trust your vehicle will have what it needs to get you to the moments that matter most. Because Napa knows the keys to a winning team. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts helps keep our communities running. Team up together with the fuel that keeps us firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Spend an evening with James Taylor and his all-star band. The American Icon is back on tour. June 30th, Maine Savings Amphitheater. The multiple Grammy Award winning James Taylor and a night full of his biggest hits. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the night with a friend, James Taylor. Once a student is reported missing, all hell breaks loose. Did this college student kill his best friend over a woman they both loved? Now you're speaking out for the first time. Why? All new 2020, tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. Looks like we're about out of time. I do want to take a quick moment to say thank you, though, to um, Kim. Kim Reef and Holton. She sent me this beautiful necklace. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And some matching earrings, but my earring holes have filled in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just the necklace for yeah. me. But it's beautiful and a really thoughtful note, too. So thank you very much. I got a, I got a pen and I can fix your ears if you want. Yeah, we'll yeah. try that. Yeah, I've done that before. Do that. It didn't go well. <laughs> have a great day, folks. Thanks for joining us.